I'm John Giever with MedPage Today at the American College of Gastroenterology meeting in Orlando, and I'm here with Dr. Walter Coyle of the Scripps Clinic in San Diego to talk about eosinophilic esophagitis, which is quite a mouthful. And there have been a number of uh, research presentations here, and uh, I'm going to have Dr. Coyle talk about what, uh, what was maybe the single most important uh, research finding that came out here. Thank you, John. Um, I think there was actually 11 abstracts presented, all representing research, and several are, are noteworthy. I think the one that uh, made the largest stir, which actually sort of reinforced data we already knew, was that this is allergic esophagitis. And it sort of makes sense that when your pollen counts are high, that you have more people being diagnosed with eosinophilic esophagitis. So there was a study out of uh, Charlotte uh, at the UNC institution, and what they found is they looked at 150 patients who've been diagnosed with eosinophilic esophagitis and they looked at their course over the year most were diagnosed within the summer and fall and August was the most common month and that's when the pollen counts are highest now stepping back eosinophilic esophagitis is like I said related to these uh, diseases of allergic and atopic diseases such as asthma they can be either food allergies or air allergens that you breathe in they get the back of your throat and you swallow them down and your esophagus has an allergic reaction just like your lungs can with asthma so this sort of fit with that scenario that a certain percentage of people, whether it's ragweed or it's grass, they're swallowing the allergens down and getting the esophagitis. And there was another study that said that we perhaps are underdiagnosing this, uh, that you need to take biopsies regularly. And many people who have repeated impactions of food, which is we call dysphagia, uh, actually have eosinophilic esophagitis and be referred for evaluation. And so we have an, uh, a number of asthma medications are now you know, migrating now into the, into, uh, the, uh, the EE area. Um, and w there was a presentation here about that, was there not? Yeah, there's two. We tell the patients to take their allergy medications, their asthma medications incorrectly. Usually you want to take it with a big breath. We tell them, don't take a breath and swallow it. So the one that's been approved and in the guidelines has the best data is a, disease, a medication called fluticasone, which they, you take two puffs, usually twice a day initially. But there's some new data coming out on a medication budesonide, which is, is also a steroid. It is uh, rapidly metabolized, so it doesn't have a lot of effects in your whole body. And it also can be taken orally. Uh, we've mixed it with Splenda in the past, but here the group out of Mayo, they mixed it with the mucosal adherent, they sort of jellied it up and sweetened it up, and they took it uh, starting twice a day and had very good results. Over 85% of their patients had some response, about half had a complete absence of the symptoms, including uh, refractory reflux symptoms and difficulty swallowing. And was there anything else of, uh, of you know, major import uh, presented here? I think um, one of the things they said, and this has bothered me before, is that we'll see people who have the classic findings of eosinophilic esophagitis. When we look down, we see webs or corrugations. It'll look like little furrows or, or actually paper mache and actually can tear very easily. We'll biopsy those thinking this person has to have eosinophilic esophagitis, yet they won't by biopsy criteria. Because we're looking for the inflammatory cells, eosinophils. Well, they looked at this and they said a lot of these folks have eosinophils, but they've degranulated. So they've released all their, uh, their um, granules that attract all the inflammatory things that make them have eosinophilic esophagitis. And that really clinically fits. The other thing is they suggested there is a variation with the number of people who have eosinophils as seasons go and the number of allergens change. So I think that was very helpful information. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Coyle. This has been very instructive. Okay. Thank you very much Good. for having me. I'm John Giever, MedPage Today.